Hello, thank you for stopping by. My name is Katrina and I work at the Carroll County Public Library and today I am going to be doing a uh, knitting lesson. It will actually be in two separate lessons. The first will be today and the next one will be next week at the same time. And we are going to make a knitted dishcloth. Now this particular pattern is free. It's called the mitered lace dishcloth. You can download this pattern for free. It's a pattern that I designed. And so if you would like a paper copy so you can follow along with what I am going to be doing, um, you're welcome to do that. I will put a link in the post itself so that you can download that pattern if you wish. Now supplies you will need is one skein of yarn. The best yarn to have for a dishcloth would be um, some cotton. I'm using Darice cotton. Um, in a worsted weight, but if you do not have that, um, any yarn will do, as long as it's like a worsted weight. And if you're at home and you have yarn that you've gotten from like Walmart or your big box stores, that's more than likely the, the yarn weight that you have. The other thing you will need are a set of knitting needles in a U.S. size 6. Uh, they can be, you could go up to a 7, somewhere around a 6 or a 7. And at the current time of filming, you can still order online for supplies. So if you don't have the supplies and you want to do this, um, like I said, at the time of filming, uh, you can still order online from different stores and get your supplies. So a little bit about myself before we get started. I have been a knitter for 24 years and I also enjoy crochet and I like spinning on my spinning wheel and weaving on, I have a four harness loom. As you can see in the background, I like yarn just a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I do design knit and crochet patterns, which is where you will be getting this pattern from. It is, like I said, it is a free pattern and you're welcome to download it so you can follow along or take notes as you would like. And we're going to begin with the cast on. Now there's many different ways to cast your yarn on. Um, I'm going to do the, the, base, the most basic way that I learned how to do it. So that is by just tying a little slip knot. Just like that. Slide your needle into it and snug it up, not real tight, but just snug. You're actually going to start by doing, it's almost a complete knit stitch, but you're going to be adding stitches to your left needle. So in order to do that, we are going to insert your right needle up through the underside of the loop, wrap the long strand, not the tail right here, but the long strand, of your yarn around that back needle. Take the left needle, flip it over the top, and you'll see there is that stitch. Now this stitch you're then going to slide right onto the left needle again. So let's do it again. You go up through, you go up through the underside, through this loop. You can see it here. That's what it's going to look like. You're going to wrap the yarn, which is held in the back, around. Your left needle is going to pass over the top of your right needle. There's that stitch, and you're going to loop it on. I'll do this a few more times. And I'm going up through the bottom so it forms this X around the back of the needle. 
so that the yarn is now actually in between. The left needle jumps over the right, there's that stitch, and you slide it on. Now you're going to continue to do this, and you want to make sure your stitches are snug, not real tight, but snug against the needle. And you're going to continue this until you can count 53 of these cast on stitches. So if you want to pause and uh, come back when you have the 53, we'll get started. You now should have 53 stitches on your needle. Double check to make sure before you get started. And now we're going to begin with the first stitch. This is called the knit stitch and it's very similar to the cast on. You're going to use your right needle. Make sure your yarn is in the back and your right needle is going to get inserted into the underside of the first stitch. You're going to wrap your, your yarn between the two needles coming from the back just how we did in the cast on. Your left needle, your left needle is going to jump over the right but instead of taking this stitch and putting it onto this needle, you're now going to just pull it off. It's transferred that stitch over to this stitch and it's added one in length. Now let's go into the second stitch. It's going to be the same thing. Again, we take the right needle, we insert it going up through the underside of the stitch and coming up behind the left needle. You're going to take your yarn, wrap it around, the left needle now passes over top of the right needle. There's that stitch and then you pull it off. So let's do this a couple more times. Goes up through it, wraps around, left needle jumps over the right and it pulls off. You now have three stitches on your right needle. So let's do this a couple more times. and we now have six stitches. You're going to continue doing this until you have 25 stitches on your right needle. Then we will stop and I will show you your next stitch. So go ahead and continue doing this until you have 25 stitches on the right. I now have 25 stitches on my needle. Now you may be asking, why am I stopping here? Well, if you look at the pattern right here, you will see that these rows right here are what we are doing right now. This is the base where we have, have our cast on. But if you'll notice, there is a line that runs right up diagonally here. It's going to actually act almost like a zipper. These are decreased stitches right here, which are going to pull in your cast on just as if you were zipping it up, and that is what's going to form your square. There will be a decreased stitch on each side of the center line, and that's what forms the zipper. So in order to do that, you're going to once again keep your yarn in the back. You're going to slip two stitches. Now you're not going to go in through the underside like you've been doing because that would actually twist the stitch. You're going to go in through the top of the loop and you're going to go one and two. So those two slipped stitches are now on the right needle. Now I'm going to do one other knit stitch just like we've been doing. like this. And now these two stitches that I slipped, I'm going to pick up with my left needle right here. And I'm going to lift them over that last knitted stitch. So you can see them sitting right here. Let me do that again for you so you can see it. You're just going to be doing it once, but I'll do it again so you can see it. You're going to slip 
and slip, knit a stitch, use your left needle, pick up these two, not this end stitch, you just knitted that, but the two slipped stitches you're going to pick up with your needle like this, and you're going to lift them over that knitted stitch. There's the knitted stitch. That forms a decrease. Once you've done this one decrease, you should have 25 stitches remaining on the left needle, which you're now just going to knit across like we did the first 25. So let's go ahead and do that together. Going up again through the bottom, make sure the yarn stays in the back, wrap it around and off. All of our stitches are now on the right needle, and as you can see, we have gained one row. You can see this is a little thicker down here than when we started. So here is our first row. Now what you're going to do is what was in your right hand is just going to be moved to your left, and you're going to have the empty needle on your right hand now. Now this time, you are going to knit 25 stitches again. So again, make sure the yarn is in the back. If it moves to the front, it creates a hole called a yarn over. We don't want to do that quite yet. So you want to keep your yarn in the back, wrap it around, and do the same knit stitch that we've been doing. You're going to go 25 times till we get to where that decrease was on the previous row. All right, I've now knit my 24 stitches, and here is my decrease stitch, you can tell because where these just have where these just have one loop in the back, the decrease one has two. Those are those two slipped stitches sitting right there. So what we're going to do for this is called a purl stitch. Now you are this is this is the wrong side of your dishcloth. The right side is the first row that we did. The wrong side just means this would be the back of your work. So if you were looking at a wrong side and a right, right side of fabric, this would be the wrong side or back side of it. Now to do a purl stitch, it's the opposite of the knit stitch. You're going to take your yarn, which you've held in the back until now, and you're going to move it to the front. Move it between the two needles to the front. You're going to use your right needle, and instead of going the underside like we've been doing, this time you're going to do it like we did when we slipped the stitch. You're going to go down through the loop from the top, right here. Then this yarn that's sitting here is going to loop around the front of the right needle, because if you look, the right needle is crossing in the front where when we do the knit stitch, the right needle is crossing in the back. So you're going to have it cross in the front, and this time the left needle is going to jump over from the back to the front. And the stitches look slightly different. You can tell a purl stitch from a knit stitch. If you look closely, this is a knit stitch. Right beside it is a pearl, and it's called a pearl because it kind of forms a little bump right here. If you look at that compared to the stitch right behind it, you'll see that there's a difference. That little bump is what determines that it is a pearl stitch. You're only going to do that pearl stitch on that decrease. For demonstration purposes, I will do the pearl stitch one more time. You are only going to be doing it, like I said, the first on the decrease stitch, but you're going to take your right needle. You're going to insert it through the top of the loop, move your yarn around the front of the right needle, and move the right, move the left needle is going to jump over the right needle, and there is your purl stitch. Okay, so you should just have one purl stitch on top of the decrease from the row before. Take the, your yarn now, move it back between the needles to the back and knit the rest of the way across the row. So 
So you're going to go up through the center how we've been doing it and off. I've now gone all the way across and let me turn my stitches. You can see where this decrease is. You can see it's starting to form this little V right here. That's the corner of your dishcloth. Now if you're following along in the pattern, we are now getting ready to begin row three. So what you're going to do, this is back again to the right side. All of the even numbers are the wrong side. All of the Odd numbers are the right side of your work. So we are now working on the right side of our work. We're doing row three. So we are going to knit 24 stitches. So knit 24 stitches, and then we're gonna get ready to do that decrease. I now have 24 stitches. Here is my decrease. You can see the little V, and there's a stitch on each side. So it is a decrease on each side of that center stitch. So we have 24, then we have a stitch, our decrease, and a stitch. So we're going to do our decrease stitch again, which is, we're going to slip one, slip two, knit, and then pick up the two stitches that were slipped and slip them over top of the last knitted stitch. There is our second decrease and you're starting to see that V forming a little bit more. You're now going to knit the remaining 24 stitches on the row. I now have completed row three and you can really see the V section here that is starting to close up our dishcloth. I'm going to move the needle to my left hand and I'm going to repeat what we did on our second row. We are going to knit the 24 stitches until we reach the decrease, which is right here. It's easier to see now that you can see where the, the V is formed. You will purl that stitch and then you will knit the other 24. So go ahead and, and knit your 24 stitches till you get to that decrease and we'll do the purl together one more time. I now have the 24 stitches and I'm getting ready for that purl. So again, I'm going to move my yarn to the front between the two needles. I'm going to insert the right needle into the top loop of the decrease stitch. Wrap the yarn around the front, the left needle is then going to pass over the top of the right needle. There is that purl stitch. Then I'm going to move my yarn to the back again, and I'm going to complete knitting the other 24 stitches for I've that now row. I've completed that row, and I'm going to once again work on the right side, so I'm going to be turning my needles, I'm going to be working with my left hand, now, if you've noticed, you can really see the V forming right here. It's really starting to stand out. It's really starting to stand out. And on each side with each even row, and on each side with each odd row, whenever we do this decrease stitch, you are losing a stitch on this side. So we now have 24 stitches on each side of the decrease. So the next time we're going to do this row, we're going to do 23 stitches. So we will do the 23 stitches. You will then have three stitches in the middle, the decrease and one on each side. So let's do this row together and then I'm going to let you go on your own for a couple of rows. So let's do this last row. You're going to knit 23 stitches. All right, I've done 23. We're going to do this de decrease together, and then I'm going to let you go on your own from there. 
So once again, we are going to slip stu two stitches. Then you're going to knit the third stitch and then pass those two slipped stitches over that knitted stitch. You're now going to knit the, the remaining 23 stitches on this row. That will be the completion of row five, which is your right side. Then you will turn it over and do what we've been doing on the, the wrong side, which is knit to that decrease stitch, purl that stitch, and knit back across. You're going to keep repeating this until you have 21 stitches on each side of the decrease. So that will be row number 10. So we are on row number five. When we complete this, we will have completed row number five. So we will go and do that portion and come back and we're going to learn a new stitch. I now have completed uh, row 10, which means I finished the wrong side, which would be the back side, and I am getting ready to start row 11. You can see very clearly the corner of the dishcloth where the V is forming, and I should have 21 stitches on each side of the center stitch, which is a, was a decrease, and I should have completed the wrong side, so now I have the right side facing me again. So that is the end of lesson one. Lesson two will begin next week at the same time and on the same day. And I hope you join us and we'll follow along so that we can have a finished dishcloth by the time we are done with the two, le uh, two lessons. Yes, so along with that, at the end um, of our lesson today, I would like to let you know that if you like looking at knitting patterns or crochet patterns, we know that at the time of the filming that the library is actually closed. However, they do have a digital library that you can go on to at any time. All you need is your library card with your barcode number in order to do that. If you log on to the library website, you will see the digital library and you can search to your heart's content there. Um, there's lots of books to choose from, but if you're specifically looking for knitting, there's knitting magazines, there's knitting pattern books, there's crochet pattern books. There's even knitting mysteries on there, which are kind of my downfall. I like reading um, cozy mysteries that involve knitting or crochet. So um, check that out over at the library website as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I will see you again next week.